welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is our agenda for today. My name is Barb Tassa, um, one of the managers here on the desk.com team. So today what we'll be first doing is a little bit of intros. We'll go over uh, who's on the call today. We'll actually showcase Service Cloud. Um, that's why you're all here. So my colleague, Bruce, who I'll introduce more fully in just a second, um, he'll be taking us through a wonderful demo of Service Cloud. And then we'll also talk about next steps. So if you are looking to actually make the move from desk to Service Cloud, which we hope you do, uh, we'll talk about what that looks like and what you need to know. Uh, we'll share all these fantastic resources our team has developed. Um, we do want your participation, so feel free to ask any questions now or save them towards the end if you'd like. And at the end, we do want to uh, make sure we get your feedback. So um, we're also asking that uh, you do stick around and make sure uh, we're able to get that feedback. So for all of you that have joined, Abby, Amanda, Angela, Eddie, Ferrali, James, Jordan, Kelvin, Michael, Ryan, Sarah, Sean, William, and Zach, we really do appreciate it. Uh, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So feel free to ask us questions at any point. Um, you're welcome um, to do that now or later on. Um, so hi, this is Barb speaking, and Bruce, I want to introduce you as well. Um, so Bruce, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do here at Salesforce? Yeah, thanks, Barb. Hi, everybody. My name is Bruce Margatich. I'm a senior success manager on the desk team, and really what that means is I work with existing desk customers to help them understand Service Cloud and to determine if it's going to be a good fit for them. Excellent, excellent. Um, and so likewise, I am on the success team here, and part of my job is to make sure that all of you are successful in making the move from desk to service cloud. So whether you are um, gonna be using a partner, if you're gonna be setting up service cloud on your own, uh, we wanna make sure you have all the right tools and resources to make the move. All right, and so quick poll here. Um, really curious to see who's here today in terms of are you planning on moving um, to a new Salesforce site or a existing one? We typically have uh, some users that already have Salesforce at their company, so maybe you're using Sales Cloud. In those cases, most of our customers would be moving their desk.com support org into an existing Salesforce org. Um, but on the other hand, if you are brand new to Salesforce besides desk.com, you'll be likely creating a brand new Salesforce service cloud site. So that would be a case where you'd be going to a new Salesforce instance. So if you can take a moment, let me know where, where we stand with you. That would be fantastic. So are you moving into a new Salesforce org or an existing one? All right, just a couple more seconds. Let's get those last votes in. All right. All right, thank you for voting. So it looks like we actually have a lot of people here today uh, that are coming in for uh, to learn a little bit more about moving to existing Salesforce orgs. So that's fantastic. All right, and then at that point, Bruce, I believe I will just kick that off to you. Um, what I'll do is I'll make you the presenter, so then you'll be able to dazzle us with uh, with the awesome power of Salesforce. Let the dazzling begin, huh, Barb? Exactly. <laughs> I wish I had that set up everywhere in my life. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for being here, everybody. And I'm gonna take you through a quick journey through Service Cloud. And Service Cloud is not just about case management. It's, it's that, but it's much more as we're gonna see today in this demo. And in comparison to Desk, when we talk about features and functionality and scale, Service Cloud has a much higher ceiling compared to Desk. Um, but there is some focused application of Service Cloud kind of out of the box. And it's really up to you to implement and evolve it as your business needs it. So yes, Service Cloud out of the box has a lot going on, uh, but it's much more focused. And then over time, you can change it and enhance it to fit your growing and scaling business. So we're in Lightning Service Console and starting with list views. So list views allow you to, they're kind of like labels in desk where they allow you to create groupings of case cases. This could be, you know, just my cases or Barb's cases. It could be cases for tier one support agents. 
It could be cases for the tier two agents. So again, it allows you to create more of a compartmentalized view of the caseload down to an individual or at a group level. And I'm gonna take you through some of the fields that are in this particular list view. Some of these are gonna be similar to what you see in Desk Today and some are unique to Service Cloud. Status is just like in Desk Today. So we have open, new, pending, and close. Pending means that you've contacted the customer and you're waiting for a response. The channel column is showing us what channel did this case come in from? Was it a phone um, case creation? Was it through email, a social channel, or a live agent chat session? All of which are channels available to you within Service Cloud to reach out to your customers or have them submit cases to you. The case number, the contact of the person who submitted the case, the subject of the case, Priority is different in Service Cloud. In Desk, it was a numerical one through 10. Here in Service Cloud, there's a critical high, medium, and low that you can designate for your cases. And in this particular list view, there's date and time open and, and a few other kind of standard fields. If you want to change your particular list view, that is which fields are displaying, we would click on this gear icon and we would select fields to display. On the right side, we're seeing which fields are currently being displayed. I just walked you through all these. But let's say you want to add a different field into this list view. I'm gonna pick one kind of randomly. It should have added it to the bottom, which it did. And if I wanna reorganize things, I just pick the field I want reorganized, reorganized, excuse me, hit save, and it will change my list view. The whole point of that is so that you can create a user experience in Service Cloud that makes the most sense to your business and down to your individual user level. Now I'm going to open a uh, particular case. And what you're gonna notice right away is it opens up a separate tab. So my full case list view is still over here on the left. And I can go back and open up as many cases as I, as I want and it will just keep opening up new tabs to the right of my cases tab. If there's a particular case that I know I'm gonna be working on for the bulk of the day and I don't wanna accidentally close it, I can hit this pull down arrow and pin that case. So it'll sit there until I unpin it. And you know this, this little quick demo of opening up multiple cases fits within one of our themes within Service Cloud, which is keeping your agents or your users in one space and trying to minimize the number of clicks to get to the information they need. So instead of having to open up multiple tabs in a browser or jumping from screen to screen, keeping them in one place. Okay, so now I've opened up a, I've opened up a, a individual case and now we're in the, what we call the agent workspace. And this is kind of a standard three column uh, layout of the information for this case. And Service Console puts everything you need uh, right here at your agent's fingertips and right in front of you. So I'm gonna go through each of these components and describe them. First off, on the left, we have our case details component. This component is designed to give just very high level information about this particular case. I'm not gonna go out, I'm not gonna read all these, but it's pretty self-explanatory. This is just a quick view into that particular case. And later I'll show you where we provide a deeper uh, level of information about that case within this uh, layout. Moving down to the contacts and account component, again, this is giving you a high level view into who submitted the case, what account they're from. In desk, we called it what customer, but in Service Cloud, it's the account. So who's the person who submitted the case, what account they work for, and any contact information you have for them. And then if your agents want to better understand which account this came from, they could click on the account tab to get high level information. And I see I selected the wrong test case because this is not populated. I probably have one that's more information. But the point being is this component gives you very high level information about the contact and then the company um, that this case came from. The cases for parent contact component, this is a pretty cool component. This shows the last three cases that this particular person submitted to you. The, the 
the concept behind that is again to give your agents or the users a quick kind of historical view into the level of correspondence with this particular person who submitted cases. If they've submitted more than three cases to you, you could hit the view all and then it would kick you out to another screen that would show you the full case history of cases that this person, Jessica, has opened up with your company. Again, this, is, this feeds into that concept of giving agents that full 360 view into that particular person to understand what kind of issues or questions or concerns they've had. And maybe just maybe that view gives you the ability to answer this present case that much more quickly. Okay, now we're gonna jump into the middle column. And this is called the case path component right here in the middle. And this is really just a visual representation of where the case is in its life cycle. You can define the length and the stages um, this is kind of just a standard four stage uh, layout for the case path. But if you want to define six steps or seven steps and change the, the headings of these stages, you can. You can actually create hub over text. And the hub over text could be guidance to your agents or your users about what they need to accomplish for that case in this particular stage before they could advance it to the next uh, step. So it's kind of like just this visual guide and a visual tracker uh, to help your agents and then visually help you understand where that case is in its life cycle. Now we're going to jump down to the feed component. This is where all of the inbound, outbound communication with this particular customer is going to be captured, whether it's phone calls or emails or live agent chat messages or social. Um, this will capture all the historical interactions you've had uh, with this uh, contact, as well as any internal uh, status changes to this case. You can apply filters to just filter out the, or provide um, a list of just the email communications or any relevant uh, communication on the phone channel, but filters allow you to further break down this interaction channel to see just the updates that you want to see per that filter. We're going to jump over to post. I, I wonder if you all have heard of Chatter before, but Chatter is uh, Salesforce's internal collaboration tool, and its best use case within Service Cloud is to give your agents the ability in the moment of need to reach out to other agents or other Salesforce users at your firm and draw them into the case for whatever reason it may be. So if I'm working this case and I need my friend Barb, who's a fellow agent, to contribute something to this, this case, and I can type, whatever it may be, if I need to reach out to Barb or some other user and have them view this case, I can give them specific instructions about what to do, and then I would hit share. Upon hitting share, two things are going to happen for Barb. One is, since she's a Salesforce user, she'll get a notification icon on this bell symbol and she could click on that notification and she'll be taken right to this case and she'll see my case comment asking her uh, for whatever I asked her for. She would also get an email with a link to this case and she could click on the link from the email. And then Barb in this case, and as you can see in real time, it captured my internal interaction with Barb. And now Barb's able to come to this case and do whatever she needs to do um, to this case to help me close it that much more quickly. So chatter, um, the post capability, again, internal collaboration, um, and create kind of an in the moment need a case team to help you close that case that much more quickly. Okay. So I mentioned earlier, we talked about this case details component being very high level information about the case. If you click on the details tab here in the feed component, you're gonna get a much deeper and broader set of data or fields about this particular case. Though some of this is kind of out of the box, you can determine what's displayed here, but the whole point is to give your agents or users the ability to come to a place within this layout to get a much deeper dive into that case. Okay. Going back to email, and this is something uh, that our desk users really like, and this may sound a bit silly, but um, within Service Cloud, unlike desk, you have the ability to do rich text editing. You have the ability to 
link files and URLs and insert pictures into your emails with your customers or end users. And you can apply templates right from here and merge fields. I'm not going to go into all of this uh, uh, detail, but from here you can insert existing templates or edit existing templates. And all of the rich take text capabilities that you weren't able to do in desk, including adding headers and footers, you could then preview the email to make sure everything looks good before sending out. Any email I send here is going to be automatically captured in the interaction feed that we saw uh, in, the, in the previous tab. And there it is, it's captured. Also within emails, you're seeing this component to the right called knowledge. And we call out knowledge because Part of a desk to service cloud migration includes knowledge and knowledge has many uses and a lot of value internally for your agents or your users it provides two great pieces of value one is as you create assets or articles or resources that help you to train your agents onboard them more quickly you can post them in here within knowledge to give your agents access to those articles so when they bump into customer questions or issues that they're not certain about and before they need to draw other people in to help them with the case, they can do some quick searches on any existing knowledge articles to try to find the answer for themselves. And then you as an organization can determine which of these knowledge articles, whether they're FAQs or product white papers or whatever they may be, but you as an organization could determine which of those knowledge articles are not only for internal consumption, but which of those articles can you actually share with customers? So right from an email, if, if this particular knowledge article um, uh, helps me solve this case, I can hit the down arrow and quickly say, insert article into email. And it does insert it. It's a bit slow right now, I'm not sure why. But again, the power here is you determine which articles are uh, you're able to publish for external viewing and then your agents can then quickly insert them to help close this case much more quickly the other powerful thing about knowledge is that in working with community which i'll show you in a little bit um, knowledge in combination with community allows you to present this externally branded website or portal to your end users or customers and within community your end users or customers can self-serve knowledge and information to better understand your products or services and to find answers to their own questions or issues. And that can include putting a knowledge component out into community and allowing your customers to self-serve these actual knowledge articles instead of having to open up a case and an agent has to attach them to an email. And that doesn't wanna work. So we're gonna move on. I'm sure everybody's heard about macros. Barb, can you still hear me? Yes, Bruce, you're coming in loud and okay. clear. I was worried that uh, I lost the connection there. So, so no, you're it, doing great. Thank you. <laughs> it's loud, but here we go. We can see the knowledge article actually did drop into the email. Sorry for that. Not, not sure why that was so slow. Um, and now I can just send this email out to this customer and they'll get that knowledge article. Macros is something that we've seen in Desk. And as everyone knows, macros are a way to automate those common and repetitive steps or multi-step tasks to help your agents or your users more quickly resolve customer issues and hopefully a lot more efficiently. And in macros, you, as you build out your service cloud instance, you can bring over existing macros and create new ones and they'd be listed here. And you could quickly apply those macros at the case level. So here is a standard macro. I can view the details or I can just run it from here or I can edit it. And when I click edit, it takes me out to our macro edit builder. And unlike Desk, uh, we think this is much more intuitive. You have a list of instructions about what this particular macro is doing. And then you have your visual page about where it's being applied to. So if you want to edit this macro right now, um, you can walk through the instructions, click through the visual editor and change what you want to edit. And it's also here that you can run that macro against that particular case. Okay, now we're going to jump into reports and dashboards. Unless, Barb, are there any questions? Right now, I don't think there are any questions, but we can definitely come back to them in, in just a minute. So if you're just thinking about 
um, what you're seeing and wondering how you can do your company support in Service Cloud versus Desk. Let us know what you're thinking. You know, what looks the same? What looks different? We want to hear from you. We're happy to show you any features that you're really curious to learn about as well. Um, or just, you know, if you want to participate, uh, we can definitely have you do that as well and, and send in some test cases. So uh, feel free to ask questions now or we can save them towards the end as well. And Barb, um, let me take, and let me take one step back because I don't think yep. I I don't think I fulfilled my dazzling um, uh, responsibilities. But oh, okay, okay. <laughs> one thing I forgot. One thing I forgot to mention is um, within Service Cloud, we have this concept of clicks not code. And earlier, I showed you how to change the fields in your list view by just hitting a gear icon and adding or removing fields and reprioritizing them. Within this agent workspace, this three column workspace. If these standard components out of the box don't align with your users or your internal processes, you can change them. So by clicking on the gear icon and hitting edit page, you're then taken to our visual editor for this particular workspace. And it's here that you can further customize what components are displayed, what order they're displayed in, that makes the most sense for your business and your users. And just by way of example, if I wanted to add my guided action list component and I want it in between, if I want it over here underneath knowledge or above knowledge, I just drop it right above knowledge and it appears. If I want to remove knowledge, which you really shouldn't because it's really powerful, but by way of example, you just click on the garbage can icon and that component goes away. Um, and then you can drag and drop things in whatever order you want. So again, this whole, you can make Service Cloud work the way you want it to work um, without uh, without having to go too deep. Okay, now let's go back to reports and dashboards. Absolutely. So Bruce, maybe before you jump into the report, if anybody is really curious to see what it would look like if you were to send in a case, um, I want you to actually, I would invite you to experience that. So what I'll actually do is copy in a very long email address uh, into the, the chat window, into the Q&A window. Um, so if you copy that email address, you go into your normal email and you send us an email that says hello or test, um, it will create a case in the service cloud environment. It's just a testing email, but if you just kind of want to experience what that looks like, I invite you to do that. And then um, after we look through reports and dashboards, uh, Bruce, maybe we can come back to all cases and see if anybody's taking us up on that offer. That's a great idea, Barb. Thank you. Okay, let's move right along. So from within Service Console, I'm in my list view for my cases. I'm gonna hit the drop down arrow and it's here that I can navigate to all the standard objects. I'm going to go first to reports. And you get some reports out of the box and I'm gonna show you very quickly how you can customize existing reports. Um, with, with Service Cloud, you're getting access to Salesforce's core reporting engine. So unlike Desk that had pretty linear and lean reporting capabilities, with Service Cloud, um, getting access to that Salesforce reporting engine, what that really means is you can report on virtually any piece of data collected in Service Cloud. So previously when we were in the cases, um, when we were looking at a case and we were showing all these different components with all these different fields, with all this different data, you can, you can draw from any of this data to create a report. So it's pretty extensive, but let's go back to our reports and I'm just going to show you an example of a report, kind of a standard layout look and feel. What you're going to notice is at the top, there's this chart, which is just the graphical representation of the data that this particular report's being pulled in. So this report is looking at average case age per account. If I don't like the way this chart looks, I'm going to click on this gear icon to change the chart properties. If I'd rather see a line chart, I click on line. If I want to see a donut, whatever it may be, whatever makes sense for that data that's being pulled in, you can quickly change the look and feel of that particular chart. If this existing report is not pulling the data you want or you want to change it, you would just click edit from here. You're going to see the same chart and the same data tables below. You can still change the chart from here as we did before, which also includes, by the way, you know, more look and feel of that particular um, report with that particular chart on that report 
but it's from here that you can look at different groups and columns and apply different filters to this particular report to edit it as you deem necessary. Within reports, when you find a particular report that you're looking at, you can we have this concept of subscribing to the report. So by hitting this click down arrow to the right of edit, I can hit subscribe. And subscribe allows me to determine the cadence and frequency in which I want to receive this report or other people I want to send this report to. So for this particular report, I do want to see it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as soon as I get in in the morning, not 8 p.m. I would start a little earlier than that. Um, and I just want to send it to me, but I could add others and I hit save. And then that report would be refreshed, generated, and be in my inbox every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. If you want to export the data to some other reporting engine or tool, you can export that information. Now I'm going to jump over to dashboards. And dashboards are what we like to call the pretty faces on top of reports. It's kind of like uh, the, the graphical veneer over uh, multi multiple reports. So I'm going to open up one of our standard dashboards. And each of these, these rectangles, um, the information is being represented as a chart. But behind each of these is an individual report. And you can build and organize your dashboards, whatever makes sense for you, whether you're the, the SVP of operations or the manager of the support channel, how, whatever dashboard makes the most sense to you in terms of what you want to track and then how you visually display it. Um, I'm going to show you how you can customize that. So by hitting edit, I'm then presented with these little pencil um, icons on each of these individual charts. This allows me to just quickly change the, again, this will look familiar to you, how the information is being displayed and whatever else I want to change about that particular chart. If I want to rearrange individual dashboard components in an order that makes better sense to me and my business, I just click and drag. And just like with reports, you can subscribe to dashboards. So same thing, you determine the cadence and frequency, who it's sent to. Okay. How are we doing on time? Let me move along. We're starting to run out of time here. So another thing I want to show you, and we're almost done, is what we call our App Exchange. And our App Exchange is kind of like Apple's um, App Store. You come to the App Exchange to deepen and broaden the capabilities of Service Cloud. It's here that you can find integrations, um, apps, and partners that you can source to help you do additional implementation work. I'm going to do a quick search on um, service dashboards because let's say I didn't like the service dashboards that came with Service Cloud and I want to import or bring in pre-built cool looking and dynamic dashboards. So what you're going to see in the results are in this particular case, we've got a bunch of pre-built dashboards by Salesforce Labs and other offerings from, from um, other providers. I'm just going to click in one to show you what the experience is like to help you vet if this is the right app or integration you want to bring into Service Cloud. You're going to see user reviews. You're going to see if it's free or paid for. You're going to get much greater level information as you scroll through about what this integration or app is so that you can make a good informed decision if this is what you want to get now and install into Service Cloud. Okay. And Kind of in closing, we're going to look at um, um, a community. We talked about it earlier. And uh, one of the topic that I want to bring up is if you move to Service Cloud, there's, and Barb's going to cover this in just a little bit, there's a lot of support resources to help you. So if you're going to self-migrate, self-implement, there's a lot of resources available to you externally, but then also within Service Cloud, we have some of our standard workflows to help guide your hand in terms of how you onboard and adopt Service Cloud and even implement it in a way that makes more sense for, you, for your business and your firm. But it's here I want to show you really quickly the community build. And the reason why I'm calling out community is because it is a very powerful aspect of Service Cloud, especially when it's working in unison with the knowledge component that we talked about earlier. But within community, it's a five-step process to pre-build your community. And then you're taken to us, and I'm not going to go through it for the sake of time, but then you're able to leverage pre-built templates to customize 
what that community, what that external portal would look like. I'm gonna show you an example of one of our customers who built a, a externally facing community using one of our templates. And you can see how they applied their rich graphic uh, texture and design to it. Very prominently displayed is the search, uh, the search area so that the user can self search for the information and knowledge they need. So hopefully they don't have to open up a case um, with your firm. And that's really the crux of community and knowledge, which is ultimately around how much case deflection can you create so that you're minimizing the inbound case traffic and then ultimately giving your customers, your end users, the ability to find the information and answers they need. And Barb, unless you had anything else, I think I'm going to stop right there given the time. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for giving us the overview, the tour of Service Cloud. Uh, so we did have a couple of questions come in and uh, thank you so much for those of you who submitted cases. So why don't we jump back into the service console, Bruce, and um, look at a couple of cases. And James, we can specifically answer your question. So your question was about the case timeline. Um, so let's first uh, do one thing. So usually to kind of get the latest cases, I'll sort the list by case number. So Bruce, if you just want to give it a sort, so we have the highest case number at the top, um, and then we'll want to change from recently viewed into all cases. So we capture everybody else that wrote in. Um, so it looks like the 1087. So if you click into that case, uh, so thanks whoever submitted that one. Um, you probably got an auto reply, uh, but you can see Seth. Uh, Seth, thanks for sending that in. I can't load my site at fakewebsite.fake. .fake. Um, sounds like you may have to uh, rename your domain, but that's totally fine. Uh, we will make sure our support team gets back to you on that. So that's basically what it would look like when a case comes in. Um, you can see the interaction in the area, and then if Bruce were to reply back, everything would go on to the timeline. And uh, this actually goes well into, James, your question. You're asking what can you actually see on the timeline? Um, so you can see if, for example, if Bruce emails back, so maybe Bruce just give a quick reply or hello. Um, anything that you're actually doing to the case is going to show up in that feed and there's a couple of different areas uh, that we can capture. So we can see interactions. So those would uh, be all sorts of interactions if I logged a call. Uh, so unlike desk, you can have basically multi-channel support in one case. So if you did need to take and log a call, um, if you needed to tweet at a customer, you can have that on all one case. Um, and then you can see what type of interaction it was. If you just wanna see the emails, then you can then click on the emails tab. Um, so that way you can see the specific emails that went back and forth between you and the customer. And then the last one, the last filter that we have pre-built here is all updates. So if you click on that, that is as close, I would say, to the case timeline that um, James, maybe you're referring to in the desk side where you could see where um, somebody opened the case or clicked on it. So we don't capture that exact same level of detail on the case timeline, but you are um, able to see, for example, when somebody replied and any of those major events like case owner changes, et cetera. So hopefully that answers um, your question about that. Um, Eddie, it looks like you have some questions about rules. Um, I see you, you're asking about routing rules. Can we still create teams and assign agents to different groups um, and then have auto routing of cases? So absolutely, you can definitely uh, have lots of routing rules. So if Bruce, if you wanna maybe dive a little bit into the setup area, we can kind of show you where, where to find the parallels. So in Desk, we just had one area called rules that could trigger based on when the interaction happens, whether it's an inbound, meaning a customer emailing you, or if you actually are sending something out, it'd be an outbound interaction, for example. So we have a few different things. So we have case assignment rules, which would just literally assign a case based on certain attributes. Um, so that's case assignment. Then we go a little bit deeper into things called workflow rules that start uh, working a little bit more like what desk has. So it would be if this, criteria is met, then take certain actions. And lastly, we have something called process builder, which is um, hopefully gonna blow you guys out of the water. So Bruce, if you wanna pull it up, let's just kind of show um, an example of a process. 
And let's click on just the first one that comes up, the create contact for email to case, and then expand that. And then we'll click on that, excellent. So this is called Process Builder, where it's a visual way for you to uh, have a certain set of actions that Salesforce is gonna take. And the amazing thing is, it's not just about the cases themselves, you can interact with different parts of Salesforce. So for those of you that already have Sales Cloud in your company and you're looking to move desk, uh, the support team and desk into your existing Salesforce instance, this is really where you can start to use the power of, of Salesforce and processes. You can take action on not just cases, but other parts of Salesforce, and you can even send stuff outside of Salesforce. So some questions people have asked me is, you know, can I send a notification to Slack if I get a case? Or can I trigger something that goes, it touches a different system outside of Salesforce? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, so Process Builder could help you do that in a, in a very uh, visual way. That's, um, I think, a, an amazing upgrade above what you could do in Desk. Um, and then Eddie, you had another question about branding. Is it supported? So I'm assuming that you're referring to the support center. Uh, my, qu uh, my quick answer is yes, absolutely. So there are different templates that are built out in Salesforce already you can use, but if you wanna totally start from scratch, you can upload your own designs. Um, yes, you can do that. I would say that's definitely on, on the more advanced side of, of using communities. But uh, if you look at, I would say Bruce, Thank you for showing open table. That's a pretty advanced way of um, kind of branding. Nest, for example, the thermostat and you know home devices company, they also use the community. So you can kind of look at their site and just see how branded it really is. So there's a lot you can do with the communities and a lot that you can brand for your own company. Great, so thank you for the questions and thank you so much for those of you that also sent in cases. Um, do you guys have any other questions? Oh, um, so you're saying branding meaning multi-brand, multi-pass. Okay, so I'm assuming you want your users to log in with your own credentials for your company. Um, yes, you can do that. That takes a few extra steps. Uh, it would involve using a third-party SAML provider like Okta, for instance. But yes, you can definitely um, have authentication for your users as well. Great, so thank you for the questions. Um, Bruce, thank you uh, for that fantastic demo. I learned a lot as well. No problem. Thanks, Barb. Okay, so let me go and take back the, the presenter role here. Uh, so give me one second. All right, make presenter. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Great. Um, all right, so next step. So now that you've seen uh, what Service Cloud looks like, you've seen some of those common threads between what you do in Desk today and then what you're able to do in, in Salesforce and then the more things that you can do in Salesforce. Um, hopefully you guys are all pretty excited about that. Um, and so if you are deciding that Service Cloud would be the next logical step for you guys, um, as you know, you do get one-to-one -one pricing. So for whatever whatever you're paying for desk.com today is what you will get uh, for Service Cloud. And essentially the next steps are really uh, to take that next step and create the Service Cloud trial site. Even if you're moving into an existing Salesforce org, it will give you a scratch plat pad to play with. Um, and it's a 90-day Service Cloud trial site that if you do decide to actually move your support into that, then um, you can convert that into a real production site uh, later on, or you can just use that as a testing ground and then move into your existing Salesforce site. Um, second is to swap your contracts. So as I mentioned, you get the same pricing for Service Cloud. And on top of that, you also get a 90-day desk courtesy contract. So that means you have up to three months to make the move from desk to Service Cloud. Usually that's plenty of time for folks. If you do need a little bit more time, just let our support team know, and then we should be able to extend those contracts uh, for those uh, the desk courtesy contracts. Um, then when you actually start to set up uh, Service Cloud, you, we usually recommend just first auditing or reviewing what you actually have built in your desk site today talk to your team, figure out what's actually needed. Uh, so we consider that the audit. Kind of like moving house, sometimes you want to declutter before you pack everything up. So think of that as the same analogy here. You're moving house, declutter, get rid of the things that you don't need and only move the things that you do need. 
Um, so when you're configuring Service Cloud, that will be a little bit easier for you. Um, you'll want to train up your team and I'll share some of the resources that we have. And then finally, you'll make the cutover, start supporting your customers in desk, uh, from not in desktop.com anymore, but in Service Cloud. So there's a couple of best practices that we have for that. Um, and so the resources that I'll share, uh, so what we really want to make sure is you guys have all the support you need to make the move from desk to service cloud. So we host regular office hours on Wednesdays in the European time zone and Fridays for ESC and PSD. We have master classes that dive deeper into certain topics like data migration, building macros, or next month we're going to be covering automations like workflow rules as well as process builder. Um, and then we also have a one week series called a virtual campfire that will take you from start to finish if you're moving into a trial org so you can get set up uh, with the help of an expert from our team. So I do encourage you guys to uh, take advantage of these great resources. Um, and then we do have a bunch of great resources, some checklists that you may wanna use as you're thinking through what you need to do. Um, if you're moving into an existing Salesforce org, we have some great uh, recommendations on how to do that. So please refer to these resources and then you can always contact our support team, support at desk.com for more assistance as you're making the transition. Um, all right. and so. Before I ask this question, let me just quickly go into the Q&A panel and see what other questions um, have come in. All right, so Eddie, you say awesome. So glad to hear that um, things are looking up. Um, Abby, you gotta go, but thank you so much for joining. Let us know if you have any questions after the call. Um, and I do wanna take an opportunity to um, unmute anybody if they if you guys want to ask questions uh, for those of you that are on the call. Um, does anybody have any questions that they want to get into a little bit more detail and explain sort of the circumstances or want us to dive into any, uh, any specific uh, details? So Jordan, um, is it okay if I go ahead and unmute you uh, so that way you can ask your question? Um, I'll send you the audio pin if you do want to. I believe it's pound to eight pound. So you should be able to put that in your phone and then um, we should be able to hear you if you unmute yourself. All right, hey Jordan. There I we think go, we can, can hear me? you now. Yes. All right, awesome, oh great. So my question was kind of how long does it take for the migration of data since we've been using DES since 2013, so quite a long time. And so it's kind of figuring out how long it would take to migrate all that data planning wise. What, what is the timeline we need to plan for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm assuming you probably have hundreds of thousands of cases or yeah. uh, something like that. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So uh, the more cases you have, uh, the more the tool will be working hard on your behalf. So it can take probably up to a week if it's that many cases okay. to actually migrate things over. Um, are you moving to an existing or a new trial? Order? Existing. Okay, so the other thing I would probably check is um, to make sure that you're moving into the sandbox first and then make sure you have enough data uh, storage that you can bring all the data over. There's sort of two different ways that you can think about the data migration. Uh, one, you can bring everything over into your existing Salesforce org. But uh, the second option is if you just want it for retention purposes, you can request a site export from our support team. And that way you can store that somewhere else. So you don't have to bring everything into your existing Salesforce org. So two different ways. That's good. It's good to know. Is there, um, I know at some point in time, like the contacts that has to kind of be merged between the contact database, between what you have in Salesforce and in desk, is that something that can happen on its own where it's, that's its own thing that's outside the scope of um, all the other data, all the case, like if we decide to go down the path of exporting all the case site, the whole site data is for archival purposes, but we mm -hmm. at least want to carry all the contacts across. Is that something that can be done independently or is it all or nothing for um, all the data? Right, so um, if you're using the tool, um, that's inside your actual, your org, uh, that, or mm -hmm. you install in the org, I believe that's more all or nothing. You would have to bring everything over. But if you're okay. just uh, looking at bringing the context, if you request the site export from our support team, you will essentially get different files with different data. So I believe okay. one of those should be the contact file. Uh, so in that way, you can you know separately import those uh, rather than having all of your case data. So I believe that is uh, what you can do. Yeah, we but haven't I, figured out if we, we wanna go the whole route of everything or start over. It's kind of, it's a hard decision to make. So we're just trying to figure out, you know, 
kind of look down both paths and pros and cons for both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say feel free to join the office hours if you want to dive into uh, that topic a little bit more. Uh, we're happy okay, to kind sure. of hash those things out and, and make some recommendations. I would say generally, if it's, um, you know, sometimes people move into bigger orgs, so uh, you may not need all that data. If you don't need it, I would say just get it for archival purposes. Um, and then that way your setup will probably be a little bit faster. But if you feel like, you know, having that transaction history right there for the agent is necessary to provide support, then, um, you know, bring it into the Salesforce org. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll figure that out as we get closer to the to the timing. It's just more planning, trying to figure that out. For us, what's more important is all the rules and all the configurations we've done over the years. And as we have more teams internally within our own organization, kind of making sure that comes across, which I guess we'll, I could deal with in a, office hours uh, meeting to kind of get and dive into that a little bit further but otherwise everything you've shown us has been great so far so fantastic well thank you so much for your questions thank and you. I'm, I'm glad it looks good i'll put you back on mute jordan but thank you for joining in your question um in the couple of minutes that we have left uh are there any other questions that anybody wants to talk out sometimes i know putting a quick question into the Q&A panel is a little bit tough. Um, so if you think of anything else, please let me know. But uh, for now, what I'll do is go forward. Would love to hear your feedback um, through this poll. At this point, based on what you've seen, really curious to see if you guys are now ready uh, for us to connect you with your renewals manager to transition your licenses from desk over to service cloud. Um, just a reminder that if you do get a 90 day courtesy contract to desk and uh, you have at least 90 days to make the move from desk over to service cloud. If you do, do need more time, um, you can absolutely request an extension on that 90 day courtesy contract, but that's just for us to really kick off that process to make sure we have time to support you and make sure all the, the paperwork is signed so you can actually start playing around with your org. Thank you so much. For everybody that attended, thank you so much for all your questions. If you have any remaining questions, feel free to send us an email or get in touch with our support team. And uh, lastly, we do have those regular office hours. Uh, so feel free to come out and uh, we'll be happy to assist you going forward. Thank you so much, Bruce, for the demo. And thank you for everybody for joining us today.